on China's property market. I'm joined by Robert Siemniak, live from Hong Kong. He's founder and CEO of Real Estate Foresight. So let's start with the Spring Festival housing sales that we saw. How indicative is that of the market as a whole? Uh, so the early, uh, the early data we have uh, points indeed at a substantial drop in sales. Uh, the weekly data for 14 major cities uh, we track uh, shows a 30% decline um, over the period of the Chinese New Year and the weeks surrounding it. And the equivalent for January um, was around minus 20%. Uh, so clearly a, a sharp slowdown, sharp decline, and extended decline, but only for those, um, for those 14 cities uh, when you look at the latest data. Um, how indicative is it for uh, the overall market? Um, I would say directionally, very much so, in terms of growth slowdown as a trend. Uh, but in terms of uh, the extent of it, that's really hard to tell. Um, because the 14 cities um, only make up uh, less than 20% of national um, sales volumes. Right. Um, uh, we, if now you we look at other data... We did see that the, the monthly price gains, no. they, did, they did slow in many cities, but then the yearly data was up 10%. So what should we read into what's happening in the snapshot versus this, this longer uh, outlook? Yeah, when it's, it's actually quite quite interesting. Like when you look at, uh, if you look from outside and look at the reported uh, 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 national 70 cities or 100 cities price data, uh, you would see that on year on year they either up 5% or 10%, depending on the measure. And then you see those headlines about developers dropping prices by 30%, and you wonder what's really going on. Uh, now, what, to square it up, um, I think what's happening is that the price indices do not reflect necessarily. Um, uh, any uh, discounts or special offers, um, um, uh, you know, offer a car instead of a 10% discount, right, with a purchase. Uh, so you will not see it in price indices. And also the market is very fragmented. So you, what you see as a pattern is many smaller cities or lower price cities are catching up, in terms, but from a lower price levels. And then the net result looks like continued um, uh, price appreciation uh, over, over a year. So how do the trends that you're seeing in first-tier cities compare with what you're seeing in the smaller cities? In terms of volumes, it's actually quite interesting. So tier one cities over the past year have been, have, uh, have been turning less and less negative in terms of volume growth. Uh, and uh, tier two and lower tier cities, they've been slowing down. But if you look at those 14 cities I mentioned earlier where we have the latest weekly data, uh, over the Chinese New Year, um, actually tier one cities increased in sales volume. The volumes were up 60% in those cities, whereas tier two was down 40%. So it's really a, a, quite, a mix, uh, quite a mix within the group. Now let's also talk about the policy easing that we're seeing. What are your predictions as to what we should be looking out for? Well, the, um, if, if the policy makers uh, decide to ease, it will be very easy to do so because we're really coming off a, a period of two years of very extensive tightening from home purchase restrictions to price caps. And the current policy directive is uh, for a greater differentiation of policies uh, across cities and even within cities across districts. So there will be much more differentiation, more local policies. And we've seen first signs of select easing um, earlier in December in places like Hezhou and Shandong and, and Zhuhai and Guangzhou and several others. Uh, but these are very particular ones. Um, so we would expect to see more, but only in response to clear signs of a market downturn in a very selective city by city way. Now, we also saw China scrutinizing and banning certain overseas real estate purchases. How do you see things developing on that front? Well, I think that's been a, a, trend, a trend for a while, and there have been some well-publicized um, institutions that may have been over-leveraged, and they are offloading uh, uh, the assets. Um, uh, so I think uh, uh, we would expect uh, quite a slowdown or a drop in, in that activity. Uh, but there is still a structural theme about um, uh, China's interest in overseas asset as a source of diversification. Um, so that I don't think it's going to change. But we should see uh, uh, a near term uh, a significant drop. Robert Siemniak, their founder and CEO of Real Estate Foresight. Thanks for joining us.